Okay, this is going to be my second vlog video. It's going to deal with, again, the RPG hobby. And this really goes out to the RPG community as a whole. And the title of this vlog, the title of this recording is going to be Why We Play the Game. Over the past couple months, I've been thinking fairly extensively about the different reasons why we play RPGs. What is it that we find appealing or that we will go and spend our time playing in a make-believe setting? I'm sure that the reasons behind this are as varied as the people playing or involved in the hobby, but I can tell you a little bit about my general concept as to why and also can tell you quite extensively as my own reasons why I actually use a fairly good chunk of my free time to actually play in RPGs, run RPGs. I think that basically in all people and all human beings there's the need to have fun. Now you ask any 100 people regardless of age, economic, sociological, demographic type criteria and there's two basic things that people do as activities. One is work we all have to work, we all have to earn a living, or at least, at the very least, if we're not earning a living, we work at a job or jobs that we love. The other is having fun. Now, different people have fun in different ways. Some people go out, see a concert, go out to the clubs, go out to the racetrack, go watch a movie. These are all fun activities, and I myself have and do do these activities. But the one activity that remains constant, I think, with people who are in the hobby are is the game. Now, this game may be your basic, standard, fantasy-type RPGs, Dungeons & Dragons, or some rendition of a fantasy-type game, science fiction or horror, modern, espionage there's a whole list of different type of RPGs that people play but having fun is really the I believe main reason why people have and play these games why they have them on their bookshelves why they bring them out once a week twice a week three times a week why people gather around a table to roll dice and basically to tell an ongoing story now, there's a lot of different RPGs out there. In the D&D line of RPGs, you have the basic old school RPG. You have AD&D 1st Edition. You have AD&D 2nd Edition. You have 3rd Edition, 3.5, and 4th Edition. Now, there has been some debate as to what edition it's a better edition. Some people say 3.5. Pathfinder. Others say 4th edition. Others say 2nd edition. Now, without getting into all the debate issues or debate points as to which edition is the edition and why you must play this edition, otherwise and I say this in quotes, you're not playing the game. It's basically about fun. If you have fun with 4th edition, play 4th edition. If your group enjoys 2nd edition, play 2nd edition. If your group wants to play some clone of D&D &D instead of D&D &D in general, some homebrew type RPG D&D &D quasi clone as long as your group is having fun as long as the dungeon master and GM 
are having fun as long as the group is able to share in a shared fantasy make-believe world in which you spend three four five six hours enjoying yourselves then you are playing the correct game now beyond the addition wars as they've often been called to really get into the fun aspect of D&D, of RPGs in general, is basically the ability to create. The ability to go into a world that is not bound by constraints. When you read a book, novel, the novel has a definite beginning, a middle, and an end and there is nothing within the reader's power to change any aspect of any of those various parts in a novel same thing can be said for TV shows or movies they are the creation or creations of one or more persons who have a definite vision where it's a locked closed model in RPGs and I want to touch also a little bit on video games. Video games, for the most part, are much like TV shows, movies, or books in that they're very linear. And although you have some exceptions, you have like the old sandbox type uh, video games such as Vice City or the newer games like Destiny or Elder Scrolls where there is an ability to have elbow room there's still a linear plot to this now RPGs have this tabletop RPGs have this as well which is an underlying meta plot but unlike novels video games television shows movies the RPG can move basically in any direction where a movie TV show or video game cannot if, for example, you have a group of characters, PCs, who are out to investigate um, a kingdom's ruins, haunted ruins, the GM or a good GM will flavor the surrounding area, not just with the core meta plot that there's a thread or supposed thread within the ruins, but also flavor the surrounding terrain, this imaginary terrain, with rumors and plot hooks that the players can then pick up on and go in that direction. It allows the players to a good RPG, a good setup RPG, set up by a good GM or DM, has already built into the sandbox type setup of his or her RPG campaign world plot hooks that are character PC driven for example we were recently playing a game in which a PC had a situation where he took over or became the new ruler with in a dimensional kind of a small pocket dimension realm but with it came a certain thread because it was a demonic realm and with it came an inherent evil bent to it now the PC has to deal with a situation where he is under constant or semi constant attack of even converting his alignment because of the nature of the energies that he took in that's a plot hook that can be played out there's it also suggests other NPCs and other um, uh, character driven story arcs that can be used now where the going back to the fun part of a RPG it has basically what it is it's a form of being able to rediscover play and what I mean by that is that we can all remember whether we're 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, a time when we were 
six, seven, eight, nine years old. And the biggest aspect or the most memorable aspect of our lives at that time was play. We all remember going out onto the playground. We all remember going out to the park and with our friends playing cowboys and Indians or playing pirates or playing um, at the time I remember uh, when I was that age me and my friends playing um, members of uh, the Star Wars movies were really big in that day and you know playing out not the roles of the primary characters of the film but uh, members of uh, the rebellion or uh, members of the bounty hunters like seen in uh, Empire Strikes Back not so much the classical or typical characters in the film but attachments characters we created ourselves and my own love for the game comes even further back than that in the sense that when I was very young, I would say four or five years old, uh, my grandfather was one who told me stories at that time, stories from Alexander Dumas, The Three Musketeers, um, Sinbad, stories of Sinbad the Sailor, um, Alababa and the Forty Thieves, all these, the stories of Camelon, all these really good stories that at three four five years old being very impressionable they really do something to you and because of that aspect of having a very at a very young age having a love for that genre it seemed only natural then later in life I would get into the hobby but basically what this hobby is it's a regenesis or a reintroduction of play it's where we can remove the not so much revert back to a younger self but rediscover or revisit that aspect of play it's also a, an output for creativity I actually have been able to um, improve my writing skills um, for short stories through RPGs I actually because I have an audience the players I can test my story my my story out on and I can see which aspects were found enjoyable and which aspects were found less enjoyable this is all a, something that is used or are benefits of the RPG hobby in general but the aspect of the play aspect the aspect of going back in and assuming a role, assuming a role, say you're a orc barbarian or you want it to be a uh, military special ops assassin in a modern game campaign. It's almost like improvisational acting. It's basically uh, what it is. As a matter of fact, I have a friend that is um, an actress that really didn't understand, as I was explaining, what RPG role-playing was until I mentioned this is improvisational acting and she said oh okay now I get this so basically it's about having fun it's about going in having fun with the concepts the worlds the monsters the treasure the creatures if you're having fun go with it now some GM's or DM's I mean there are limits to what can or should shouldn't be done in a campaign say I'm playing a fantasy campaign and one of my players says hey Chuck what I want to do is I want to uh, my character is going to be a plasma rifle wielding Klingon who's also the lord of this barony within and the borders of you know civilized territory I'm probably not going to run with that or allow him to run with that in a fantasy type campaign but if it's allowable I've seen too many uh, GM's and DM's not allow certain things within their game which is fine it's their game but my whole concern and my focus primary focus uh, above all else is the players enjoyment of the game now and of course my enjoyment as well as a DMGM being able to present this game 
as a place where they can actually have fun. And of course, the monsters and NPCs um, are basically characters where that I for have that have an aspect that I find um, that I find that that they have this aspect that is something that I find desirable or uh, resonates uh, with me in one way or another. So really I would like to know what uh, your thoughts. Um, this goes out to the entire RPG community on YouTube is your thoughts. Um, how important is fun in your game? Um, is adherence to the rules where if it the rules disallow it or a certain role comes up for a certain action that required a die roll and it comes in a less fun or less cool outcome do you fudge the rules and allow the the cool fun story element or event in the game to proceed or do you adhere strictly to the rules and say no this is it doesn't happen this way it could have been cooler if it had rolled another way but this is the way it rolled and this is where we're going to go so i really like to hear you know what is your percentage rate I, I i think that all in all i would have to say i'm a good 50 50 balance uh where i hold back or pull back but i also allow the fun factor the other 50 percent is the fun factor that i allow that i allow within um an rpg session so give me some feedback on that um let me know what you think on the uh fun factor of rpgs